Monsoon session of parliament begins today. The session to continue till 13th August. Government appeals opposition to support passage of key bills. Congress sticks to its demand of resignation of some BJP union ministers and chief ministers. The government rejects their demand. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that changes in labor laws will be attempted through consensus building with labor organizations. Addressing the 46th session of the Indian Labor Conference in the capital yesterday, the Prime Minister said that talks with labor organizations on labor reforms are on and expressed confidence that solutions will be found on these issues. The Prime Minister also dedicated the National Career Service portal and health reforms of ESIC. Flood situation remains grim in Madhya Pradesh. 11 people washed away near capital Bhopal. Over 6,000 people evacuated in the temple town of Ujjain. Uttarakhand also faces flood fury. The Indian Space Research Organization crossed an important milestone yesterday when it successfully tested the country's latest and most powerful cryogenic engine for 800 seconds. The cryogenic engine will power ISRO's next generation rocket, the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III, capable of carrying the 8-ton class of satellites to space. With his ministers and bureaucrats facing allegations of involvement in the bribery scam involving U.S. firm Louis Berger, Assam Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi yesterday ordered an inquiry into the matter. The CM asked additional chief secretary to inquire into the matter. The Supreme Court allowed SIT and Special Task Force of Madhya Police to file charge sheet in Vyapam scam case till the matters are referred to CBI. A three-judge bench affixed July 24th for further hearing of the application of CBI that the probe agencies of the state police be allowed to submit the charge sheets in the scam cases. Gold plunged 4% to its lowest in more than five years on Monday as sellers and top consumer China sold off the metal in a matter of minutes just as bullion's safe haven status takes a fresh knock from mounting expectations of a US rate hike. Gold got whacked in Asian trading session on Monday, plunging below $1,100 for the first time since March 2010. An explosion hit a cultural center in the mostly Kurdish southeastern Turkish town of Suruj near the Syrian border. 30 persons were killed and more than 100 persons wounded in the blast. Turkish authorities have cracked down on IS networks, arresting dozens of suspects in recent weeks and beefed up its border with Syria with tanks and anti-aircraft missiles as well as additional troops. The UN Security Council backed Iran's nuclear agreement with world powers but the Islamic Republic's revolutionary guards attacked the resolution, underlining powerful opposition to the deal. U.S. President Barack Obama, who also faces domestic political opposition to the agreement, hailed the United Nations endorsement, saying it showed last week's accord commanded broad international support as the best way of ensuring Iran never gets nuclear weapons. Suspected Boko Haram militants have killed more than 20 people, including multiple children, in their latest attack on northern Cameroon, easily overwhelming the few soldiers posted at the targeted village. More than 80 assailants stormed the village of Kamuna, located near Lake Chad in the northern strip of Cameroon that lies between Nigeria and Chad on Sunday night. Greece's government has no intention of calling early elections while in the throes of finalizing a deal with its Eurozone partners on a new bailout, a spokeswoman for Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has said. Tsipras was dealt a blow by his own camp during last week's parliamentary vote on the first batch of austerity measures demanded by lenders in return for a new 82 billion euro rescue package. Former Indian captain Saurav Ganguly was on Monday announced as one of the four members of the BCCI's working group formed to study the Justice RM Lodha's committee order on the IPL and give recommendations within six weeks. The committee will be chaired by IPL Chairman Rajiv Shukla and will have BCCI Secretary Anurag Thakur and Treasurer Anurudh Chaudhary as its other members. Sports Ministry officials yesterday clarified that they are yet to receive any form of communication on Indians men hockey team coach Pon Vanas, who claims to have been sacked by Hockey India. Sports Authority of India pays Van a salary, but no senior official from the ministry's nodal agency was available for comments on yet another controversy hitting Indian hockey. Chaired by FIFA President Blatter, the executive committee pushed for a range of important reforms to be submitted for decision to the upcoming extraordinary Congress, underlining FIFA's commitment to better governance and greater accountability. They also decided that this Congress will take place in Zurich on 26 February 2016, when a new FIFA president will be elected. Brazilian soccer legend Pele left the hospital yesterday after undergoing back surgery, the latest in a series of health complications for the 74-year-old former Sra striker. 
with more than 1280 career goals and an unequal 3 world cup titles during his playing career pele is considered by many to be the greatest soccer player of all time